Greetings, welcome, and thank you for clicking. I'm Christian from Standing Stones Healing, where my mission is to support your journey with powerful, encouraging, relaxing healing experiences, coaching, and encouragement for life's challenges, changes, and transitions. Welcome. In this video, I want to talk about weathering life's changes and provide you with some encouragement during your life changes. I have numerous years of experience, specifically working and coaching clients in life changes with a specialization in career changes. However, the hundreds of clients that I have worked with and the thousands of people I have presented to on careers and career topics um, are uh, experiences that allow me to be able to speak about changes and life changes in general because a lot of the principles, a lot of the experiences with the life change of career changes are applicable to all kinds of life changes. Um, whether you are transitioning from careers, from one career into another, maybe you have a job loss, uh, maybe you have just um, ended or are thinking about ending a relationship. Um, maybe you have questions about uh, a particular friendship, or maybe you are dealing with the loss of a loved one. Um, these are all topics that can be discussed in uh, the same kinds of ways because they are life changes. So the first tip for dealing with life change is to number one, recognize that life change is normal. So we all experience life changes and change is an absolute normal part of life. And so when you experience a life change, know that life changes are a normal part of life. Um, and so you are going to experience changes throughout your life again and again and again. These are things that are going to reoccur. So if you have, um, ended a job, maybe you've just recently resigned from a job or have been laid off or terminated, or if you have ended a relationship, uh, you may be thinking, phew, I'm so glad that's over with, um, or oh my gosh, that was terrible, I never want to have to go through that again, um, or I'm done and I don't have to worry about anything like that ever again. Um, actually, you very well may experience this same kind of situation again in your life, at the very least. I can guarantee you, you are going to have additional life changes. And so recognizing that life changes are a part of life, transitions are a normal part of life, um, uh, is the first step. So acknowledging that yes, what has just happened to me is a part of life that can and will happen to me again. Um, so normalizing this experience is really important for you. In addition to that, normalizing the experience of the feelings that you may be having. So acknowledging that during a life change, a life transition, you may be feeling any number of things. You may be feeling sadness. You may be feeling anxiety. You may have trouble sleeping. You may have trouble eating. Um, you uh, are maybe experiencing even excitement um, or anticipation. And so any and all feelings that you are feeling are going to be normal to feel during a life change or transition. Now I do want to say that if you are experiencing um, undue levels of depression or anxiety um, to seek professional counseling for that. Um, coaching can be beneficial, uh, so it is beneficial to seek out a coach. And if you are experiencing severe mental and emotional anguish, then I do recommend seeking a licensed counselor to help you uh, work through some of the um, deeper, more, more challenging issues. Um, but oftentimes with a life change, um, you are going to be able to have support through other means dealing with that life change. Um, and uh, so knowing that your sadness or your mild anxiety, um, trouble sleeping and eating, that these things are normal during a life change. So recognizing that the feelings that you're feeling are normal. 
Of course, we know that sadness over the loss of a relationship is going to be normal. Sadness is, of course, a normal part of grief. But we don't necessarily recognize that during a life change, you may be feeling some anger, even when it's a positive life change. Gosh, I don't know why I'm feeling so angry. What's wrong with me? Um, you know, I've just accepted this new job, and I'm very excited about um, moving to a new location, a new home. Why am I feeling so angry? Well, it's a normal part of the life change process. So recognize and acknowledge that and know that um, these feelings are most likely temporary and um, most likely are going to pass um, and that uh, these feelings are normal. So recognizing the normalcy of these feelings and um, making sure to not beat yourself up for those feelings. Um, to not beat yourself up if three weeks after a relationship has ended, you are still feeling some sadness. That is normal. So, um, you know, making sure to acknowledge that uh, you are normal. Another thing during life changes is that I want to encourage you to be gentle with yourself at those times, even again if they are positive life changes. Um, when you are feeling these range of emotions, it can be easy for us to um, be uh, hard on ourselves. Um, again, oh, I should be feeling this way. Why am I not feeling this way? What's wrong with me? But I want to um, acknowledge and recognize for you uh, that it's important for you to be gentle with yourself at these times, even during the smallest life changes. You know, we have a tendency to think of life change as this very large thing, like, oh, a life change, Christian, means that um, I'm moving to a new country, or um, a loved one has just passed away, or I'm changing my career. Life changes can be very small things, um, and even these small things in our lives can present us with challenges and um, make us feel um, as though we are kind of um, adrift in a sense in the sea of life. So even very small life changes can have effects on um, all of our life experiences, sleeping and eating and our emotional well-being. Um, you know, uh, our lives, um, we don't, I think, always acknowledge that when we have a small change in one part of our life, that it has ripple effects upon other parts of our lives. And so, um, you know, while we can have a change, a life change in one area of our life, um, it can affect other areas of our lives too. So be aware of that and acknowledge that and be gentle with yourself during that time um, and, uh, and with any experiences and feelings that you might have. You are absolutely okay. You are absolutely normal. Um, so what else, Christian? Great, I'm normal. I need to be gentle with myself. So what? What do I do about this? These feelings and experiences that I'm having. First of all, during a life change, in terms of action, it's important to recognize that when our life changes, our habits change. Our habits are really what comprise our days and um, structure and order our lives. And so um, when you have a life change, even a small one, it's going to throw off your habits. When your life changes, your habits change. One of the tricks to managing life change is to recognize that um, your habits are going to change and to take control of these and to steer them in the ways that, that you want them to go. So for instance, if you're saying, gosh, I've just ended this relationship, it was unhealthy for me, um, and it was an abusive relationship, um, I actually was in an abusive relationship, uh, an abusive uh, heteronormative relationship um, in the past. And so um, I know that when you leave that kind of relationship, it can be very um, at once um, relieving and, and, and on the same hand, terrifying and scary about what happens next. How do I cope and what do I do? And so um, recognizing that when, for instance, you end a relationship, including um, and even especially um, in a, a very emotionally and or physically challenging relationship, it's important to acknowledge um, that your habits are going to change. You know, you no longer have that person to hang out with. 
to spend your time with. You have all of this free time now, this additional time, this extra time. What do you do with that time? Um, and so recognizing that your habits are going to change during any life change is a very important part of the process. Once you recognize that your habits are going to change, whether you want them to or not, you can then steer them in the ways that you want them to go. So by saying, okay, I've ended this relationship, I have all of this free time, rather than just allowing the time to be absorbed in whatever way, shape, or form that it will be absorbed, it's important to um, claim that time and to say, okay, these are the purposeful things I'm going to do with this time. For instance, after an unhealthy relationship, we may say, I really want to adopt some healthy habits now. Sit down, think it out, journal. I'm a huge uh, proponent of journaling. Um, so sitting down, journaling, doing some thinking on the page about what the habits are that you want to adopt. Um, I want to be more healthy. Okay, what does that look like? What does being healthy look like to you? What does that feel like? Um, and writing those things down in a general sense. Once you get those ideas of um, the kind of person you want to be um, going forward, you can then sit down and talk about the specifics and um, the, uh, the ways in which you want to go about filling your time and those new habits that you want to adopt. Uh, maybe you want to be healthier and so you're going to say, okay, Every morning when I first wake up, I am going to exercise. First thing in the morning, I'm going to do 10 jumping jacks. Great. So as soon as you get out of bed, um, maybe go to the bathroom first, you do 10 jumping jacks. So do your 10 jumping jacks, and um, that is a healthy habit, a small change that you can incorporate into your life. So making sure that during life changes, you recognize your life is going to change, your habits are going to change, and so adopting some directed habits that you want to uh, have in your life. The next thing that I'm going to recommend, um, besides uh, adopting some healthy habits or knowing that your life is going to change, and so making sure that you adopt uh, those habits, is to recognize that um, life changes are uh, experiences that we can grow and learn from. So to say to yourself, yes, this thing happened to me, yes, I have lost my job, and what am I gonna do in order to learn and grow from that experience? And you may be thinking, Christian, how can I learn and grow from the fact that my boss was just a jerk and fired me? Well, I'm going to encourage you to sit and reflect and think about what this experience has taught you and what it is you want to get from the experience. So how is it that you want to learn and grow? We can, in our lives, direct the ways in which we want to learn and grow. And so um, I'm going to encourage you to think about what it is you want to get out of the experience, um, what it is you want to learn and grow, how you want to change, not just the habits that you want to now include and develop, but the larger ways in which you want to grow and learn from this experience as a human being. Um, one of the ways that I really learned and grew from my previous experience in an abusive relationship was to learn compassion for what people in abusive relationships are going through. And uh, so that is a wonderful gift that I really learned from that experience. I will say that at that time, um, it wasn't something that I consciously said, great, I've just gone through this experience and now I want to be more compassionate because of it. I think that's something that oftentimes comes later. But if we can go into a life change saying, that I am going to learn larger things from this, I am going to create greater meaning from this experience, then we can be more purposeful about those habits that we develop in place of the time that we spent doing other things. And uh, we can um, create a greater connection to our own experiences 
and a greater awareness of how we want to be the next time we have a life change. Because remember, you're going to have more life changes. Um, so uh, gentleness, um, habit changing, uh, a connection to the experience, and more uh, meaning that you derive from it. These are all great ways to deal with life change, great ways to um, weather these experiences. Because you are going to have life changes, you already have had plenty of life changes, and you will have more. So another thing that I want to encourage you to do is to draw on your previous life change experiences. You have already had numerous life change experiences. Uh, for instance, if you are a senior graduating from college, the chances are pretty good that you've already graduated from high school and have had that experience of stepping into the unknown, that experience of, oh my gosh, what comes next? And so I'm going to encourage you to draw upon the strengths from your previous life experiences and to look to, to the evidence that shows that you have already made it through life changes and transitions and to give yourself credit for already overcoming those experiences and moving through them. So looking back on your previous strengths and allowing them to show you proof that you've done something like this before and you absolutely can do it again. So focusing on the past positive experiences and how they have shaped you and, gr and you have grown from them and uh, who you are now because of them. Final tip for weathering life changes, at least for now. Final tip is to focus on the things that you are gaining through this life change rather than the things that you are losing. So rather than focusing on all of the things that you are now losing, oh, through this relationship, I now have no one to um, cuddle with on the couch while I watch Netflix. Oh, I now don't have um, anyone to... Um, uh, sing me songs over the telephone um, or whatever the case might be. I instead encourage you to focus on the things that you are gaining from this experience. Life changes are actually neutral if you think about them. You've lost a job. That's a bad thing, Christian. Well, actually change is neutral. It's what we assign to the change, the feelings and emotions that we put into the change that determine whether or not they are positive or negative. Christian, how is a family death, a, a, the death of a dear loved one, how is that ever positive? Well, again, it is the, the death itself is neutral. I won't argue with you that it is very challenging and sad and difficult um, to lose a loved one. And... Um, it's really all about the uh, emotions, the feelings that we experience during those changes that determine whether or not they are positive or negative. And I can tell you that with every life change, there are positives and there are negatives. It's up to you what you focus on in those. Are you going to focus on the positives or are you going to focus on the negatives? For the death of a loved one, for instance, if you have recently experienced the death of a loved one, I am sorry for your loss. The death of loved ones is challenging. It is life-changing. And these are the most challenging things oftentimes that we will ever experience in our lives is the death, the loss of people who we love. And so I want to say that I am sorry for your loss and I also want to encourage you to focus on the positives at this time. The positives being the wonderful memories that you have of that person, the wonderful experiences that you've had. If they were someone who maybe um, suffered with an illness, focusing on the positive of um, the fact that they are no longer suffering. 
these can be some positives. Some other positives are if it was a loved one that you were caring for or a lot of your mental or emotional energy was going into care and concern for that loved one, you can now breathe a sigh of relief and know that that mental energy that you have put into it, that emotional energy, can in a sense be freed up to focus on other things. Um, so while these are challenging uh, and difficult times, we can always see the positives in them. I will not lie, this can be a real challenge and that the negatives can oftentimes seem so much more overwhelming than the positives. I can tell you that these feelings will, of course, as you know from your previous experiences and life changes, decrease. I can also simply encourage you to focus on the smallest positives and to keep focusing on those smallest positives and making sure that you are continually bringing your awareness back to the positives in the experience. Christian, I'm on unemployment and I don't have money for rent or food. What positive is there in that? Maybe a positive is that you now have more time to spend with your children, your family, your spouse, your parents, your pets. Maybe now you get to walk your dog more often. Focus on the walking of the dog and the positivity of that experience rather than all of the negatives. I'm not saying ignore the negatives. I'm saying put conscious energy on the positives. Put conscious focus on the positives. In another video, I will talk a little bit more about how to um, fill up the cup, as I like to call it with um, positive thoughts and experiences rather than negative. Um, but in this video, I wanted to share with you some tips for weathering life's changes and uh, offer you some encouragement during your life change experiences. If you are not currently going through a life change, um, I can tell you that at some point in the probably not so distant future you will whether a small life change or a large life change. And so I want to encourage you uh, to um, be gentle with yourself, draw on your past experiences, know that any and all feelings that you might be feeling are normal to experience during this time, encourage you to seek out supports, whether in the form of counseling or even uh, coaching or, uh, as you may know, I do offer Reiki, and I do specialize in life changes and transitions and sending Reiki to you and your life change and transitioning experience. Um, and uh, so I also want to encourage you to reach out if I can be of support to you during your life change, transition, or even challenge um, to support you with coaching, encouragement, uh, Reiki ceremonies to help you usher in your new life um, and help you direct positive energy towards that way. So uh, thank you for viewing. I'm so happy to be able to offer you these words of encouragement. It is an honor to serve you and the world and my clients in this way. And so um, I am Christian again from Standing Stones Healing, where my mission is to offer you and support your journey with powerful, unique, encouraging, relaxing healing experiences, including Reiki, coaching, and encouragement for your life's changes and transitions. Thank you and best wishes.